Buenos días a todos. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Gracias por conectarse. Eh, esta va a ser una presentación en inglés, español y en los videos escucharán algunas de las lenguas indígenas de Colombia. Um, gracias. Thank you again. I want to tell you a little bit about Duke Engage. Uh, Duke Engage is a program from Duke University that funds students for two months to go uh, around the world and grow professionally and personally by serving a community. El, este programa es, es un programa que, de la Universidad de Duke que patrocina a estudiantes, más de 400 cada año, para que viajen alrededor del mundo y sirvan durante dos meses en una comunidad y crezcan así eh, sus horizontes, eh, sus habilidades profesionales y personales. De no ser por las difíciles condiciones que vive el mundo hoy, um, if it wasn't for the uh, difficult conditions that we have in the world today, the seven students we're going to meet briefly uh, would have traveled to Colombia for two months. Habrían estado en Colombia dos meses sirviendo las organizaciones Soy Doy y Repurpose IT. Um, para trabajar para Repurpose IT con dos propósitos. Uno, mejorar su estrategia de comunicaciones y crear una página web. Y dos, mejorar el acceso a los computadores a través de unos planes de clase para facilitar el trabajo de los maestros. As you will see, we didn't travel. Um, we stayed uh, in different cities around the United States, um, but we managed to work as a team. We were able to uh, keep our bodies here, um, but have our souls and our hearts and our minds in those beautiful places that um, are the homes of the indigenous peoples of Colombia. No viajamos, eh, pero tuvimos el cuerpo aquí, y la mente, el alma, eh, el corazón, en esos lugares tan lindos en los que viven eh, los indígenas colombianos. En este momento, eh, les presento a Ted Hain, el fundador y director de Repurpose IT. Ah, muy buenos días a todos. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, as Dahlia said, my name is Ted Hein. I'm the founder and director of Repurpose IT. Um, what a wonderful experience this has been with Duke Engage. Um, so uh, my uncle, who's on our board of directors and was one of uh, the initial volunteers for the Peace Corps, said it's important uh, for these types of things to meet people where they are. Um, with COVID, that's obviously impossible. And particularly when we're dealing with a population that's on the other side of the digital divide, and we are a project uh, that's about technology. But we've overcome those um, struggles and worked a lot together virtually and with uh, many teachers and um, other people in Colombia. Um, the other thing that um, we learned at the outset of this uh, from uh, Duke's uh, ex-president Broadhead was to help people in the way they want to be helped. Um, and as you'll see, the team has done a, an admirable job, uh, just fantastic work, as you'll see, for both the uh, creation of lesson plans and uh, the, the topic area that we selected for food security couldn't be any more relevant with the reality that these communities are facing. Um, and then the communications team has really uh, transformed uh, us and set us up to be able to take uh, repurpose to the next stage. So I'm ever so grateful, uh, but let's get on to see some of this great work. Thank you. Welcome, uh, everybody. Well, and now, if you are listening good, okay. Uh, my name is Miguel Rojas. I'm a co-director of Duke Engage Colombia. So, the co-director of Duke Engage Colombia. Uh, and 
And uh, what we're going to be uh, seeing this morning, uh, it's uh, uh, a collective effort, basically, because we have been working with indigenous communities, teachers, students, uh, dynamizers, and a number of people uh, across two nations, but also many in indigenous nations. Uh, in a collaborative way to try to understand uh, what Repurpose IT has been doing for the past years uh, in a remote uh, indigenous schools in Colombia, but not only in Colombia, but elsewhere. Uh, but also uh, uh, facing a big challenge is how to tell this story, uh, how to first understand uh, what is going on, uh, and second, how to tell a story for people that are master storytellers. Um, I'm going to say it in Spanish very uh, rapidly. Estamos muy agradecidos por todo el trabajo que hemos hecho colaborativamente eh, a través de dos naciones, Estados Unidos y Colombia, pero a través de las múltiples interacciones con naciones indígenas en Colombia. Eh, nuestra eh, aventura eh, fue tratar de contar una historia, que es la historia de Reportos Haití, trabajando en pequeñas escuelas rurales indígenas en áreas remotas de Colombia. ¿Y cómo contar una historia eh, para personas que son eh, maestros eh, de, de la narración oral? Eh, ese fue nuestro gran reto. Then, this challenge has, uh, uh, has been divided in two parts in the communications team. Uh, we work uh, also uh, alongside uh, an advisor that we call, a good friend of all these projects, uh, Rafael Osuba, the director of the Art Studio project, uh, to uh, consult on the website design. And uh, also we develop a number of audiovisual pieces, uh, close to actually 27 audiovisual pieces, that if we put all them together, uh, would be uh, around 92 minutes. Then. In two months, we produce a feature-length film. You're going to be seeing just the, the small shorts of six nations that uh, later uh, one of the students will present. Uh, we process hundreds uh, of hours of video, uh, thousands, over thousands of photographs taken by Ted and his team uh, in many locales in Colombia, uh, and we're very proud of what we can be, what, what, like, the, of the results that we have today. Uh, estamos muy contentos de poder compartir con ustedes eh, este trabajo. Eh, hemos eh, procesado eh, eh, alrededor de 90 minutos de video, eh, casi una película completa, en eh, múltiples piezas, eh, 27 piezas cortas eh, de video. Eh, hemos trabajado con eh, horas de video para poder llegar a este punto con miles de imágenes tomadas por eh, Ted y por reportes. Uh, and now I'm going to give the voice to uh, the communication team. Uh, video actress Claire Kramer uh, first are going to uh, present us uh, the website, a general view of the website that you will be able to visit now. And then after them, uh, Jackson Morica, our master uh, video editor, uh, and creative mind behind many of the images you're going to be seeing uh, will be introducing uh, six of the videos we produced. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. Hi, I'm Claire Kramer, um, and uh, Leo and I are just going to speak a little bit about the website that we created over the past eight weeks. Um, if I could just share my screen, that would be perfect. So when you first enter the website, you'll see the trailer that we um, produced, uh, that uh, Jackson produced, that we showed at the um, beginning of this presentation. But basically the, the communications team was um, trying to tackle the, uh, you know, trying to tackle how Ted wants to present, repurpose it. Um, and just express this story that he speaks about with such incredible passion. And so we wanted to effectively tell his story in this website. Um, and a few things we wanted out of 
this website was to be simple, attention grabbing, very visual and educational, which Leah will go into um, in explaining the projects page. Um, and we wanted to think a little bit about the people who are viewing our website, which are corporate donors who may have some technology to donate, individual donors, and even those who have donated and or worked for repurpose IT in the past. Um, so each part of the website circles back to each other. Um, so as you go through, um, you can click on different pieces um, and it's always encouraging you to learn more about um, repurpose IT and the work that it does. So it's very, it has, this website has a ton of content on it, but we didn't want it to be um, too overwhelming. So it's super easy to navigate. Um, there's all these different pages, which you can click on to. Um, and circle back to and a ton of visuals to just really um, bring you into the space that repurpose IT works within. Um, and in the same way that we couldn't travel, we wanted to create the opportunity to, for everyone to travel from home and even inspire uh, further work, so further volunteering and donations. Um, so this is the home page and it goes through the mission um, the digital divide creates disparity in education. We have a solution. Um, laptops become technically obsolete in the corporate world and are prematurely discarded. We partner with indigenous educators to provide repurposed repurpose computers, carefully curated open source content training and ongoing support. Um, so if you go to our work, um, we can see a further explanation of the mission um, and each part as I as I mentioned before sir, encourages you to explore further into um, the website so we have all these links on the side um, again explaining the focus the implementation process um, and then uh, through our team Leo will go into projects but through our team um, we've explained each person who's worked with us before, um, our partner organizations. Um, yeah, so we just wanted to create a really clear, um, concise explanation of all the work that Repurpose IT has done and just try to um, really articulate the incredible work that they've done and tell their story well. And I'll hand it off to Leo now. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Leo. Thank you very much, Claire. For <coughs> um, so like Claire mentioned, uh, we were trying to tell the story of repurpose IT. Uh, Ted has had content because he's been working with projects for many years now. Um, so with that, I'll take you to our projects page. Um, so like I said, since Ted has had so much experience working and Repurpose IT in general has had so much experience working with these different cultures um, all across the globe. We've had uh, a very, one of the goals was to make it as accessible as possible to understand the story. And each of them, each of these communities has contributed to the Repurpose IT story. Um, so this is our project page showing that. So each one of these, like I said, uh, if you were to click on them, they would take you to the specific page telling you more about the project, what Repurpose ID, IT did with that community. So for instance, with the Waunan, we have, uh, we try to make it as clear as possible, certain uh, highlighting the key aspects of what happened during the trip. Um, so the number of people impacted, the schools impacted, um, again, as well as these graphics so we've had uh, we've also added these videos to make those who are more audio visually inclined they can click on these and watch uh, Jack will show you uh, many videos that um, him Miguel and others have have helped create um, and then like Claire mentioned we'd like to continue to loop back into the rest of the site to keep people engaged so we have the other projects here on the right, if you want to click on those. We also have uh, interviews that we've carefully curated for each of these um, each of these projects. So we 
work with the community, not to the community. So uh, we wanted to highlight that through these interviews, show the effects, because um, it's, it's clear when the person, there is no one way communication of doing help. It's, it's back and forth. And we wanted to illustrate that through these interviews. Um, and then, so that's, that's generally what the projects page is about. You can get lost in each of these projects, and I recommend each of you after the meeting and as, as this page gets published that you go and, and explore that for yourself. Um, furthermore, like I said, we want, we want the community to, to try and continue to learn more of the audience of the website. Um, so one question we wanted to address is uh, why Columbia in recent times? We've, we've included some information here to, to illustrate that further. Um, And then uh, Columbia isn't the only place Repurpose IT has, has worked. So you'll see that illustrated, like I said, in the projects page as you go further back in uh, chronology. And then finally, uh, the donate aspect of the website, each of these will take you to an individual page that explains further. Um, we, we created special forms for people to fill out. Um, and things like this. So the website is built very functional. Uh, we try to make it aesthetically pleasing as possible, as well as trying not to get overwhelmed by the, the sheer amount of content that we're able to create. So <clears throat> I'll, uh, I'll hand it over to the rest of the communications team. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Jackson. I um, am the third member, the third student of the communications team. I want to see if my lighting could be better. There you go. Yeah, so um, I'm Jackson. I'm also on the communications team. And uh, like Leo said, I work mainly with uh, Ted, Miguel, and Raphael to create content for the website. And so very early, Ted, he expressed how much uh, media that he's uh, ha that he has after years and years of trips. Um, so we knew that this content had to be the focal point of the website. Um, so what we're going to watch now is uh, the six uh, trailer videos for each of the Pueblos that Repurpose uh, works with in Colombia. And the idea was to give the user on the site just a brief idea of uh, what each place is like and how Repurpose has been able to work uh, with them and alongside them. And so we wanted to create this consistent structure for each video um, by showing the location of each Pueblo first, uh, then adding the voiceover to tell a story. Um, but despite the voiceover, we really wanted to let the material speak for itself um, uh, rather than uh, explicitly summarizing, you know, everything about each Pueblo. Um, so it was a challenge because some places had maybe too much uh, media while others didn't have enough to uh, fit this, uh, the structure that we laid out, but we made it work. Um, yeah, so this, the whole process was, it was really interesting because we're, we were obviously supposed to be in these uh, Pueblos and we were not. Um, but it's funny how we became very familiar with them uh, after spending so much time through the videos and photos and combing through all of the, all of the material. So I feel like I probably know more now about each place uh, than maybe if we had even gone there because uh, with the physical separation, I, ha we, I had to learn so much more um, to make these work. And so while we watch these uh, videos, you'll see some little elements that we tried to add into uh, each video, like the look same loading bar that's used in the trailer will also appear in the beginning of each video, um, like we're loading up the culture. And we also incorporated a unique sound for each Pueblo while that plays. And we also added some other things uh, that go along with the idea of technology education culture that Repurpose is really all about. Um, so I don't want to say too much, though, um, before we watch the videos. So we can go ahead and watch them now.
Waco are one of the four brothers of the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta's indigenous cultures. Repurpose IT is honored to work with this very traditional culture. After three introductory trips and seven months of planning, Repurpose IT conducted teacher training in January 2020. Fifty-two laptops were donated to the remote Bunquimaque School District to enhance the students' and teachers' educational resources. This implementation added a significant amount of STEM content to the laptops. Notably, 83 FET simulations from the University of Colorado. The teacher training also included a visit and lecture from our friend, the notable Arhuaco documentarian, Amado Villafana, who has donated his many films for use on the laptops. Repurpose works with indigenous schools to help them conserve their cultures, as well as creating connections between cultures. During a visit to Bunquimaque in the mountains of northeastern Colombia, we held a school-to-school -school video conference with the Wanan Chachajo School on Colombia's Pacific Coast. While video conferences have been common for many years, this was a first at both of these schools, which are on the other side of the digital divide. Chachajo. In September 2018, Repurpose IT was invited to visit the boarding school Charneca to know more about their needs. This school is located in the Wiwa capital of Achinticua. After months of planning and adapting the laptop contents for the WIWA culture, in July 2019, the Repurpose IT team returned for teacher training and implementation.
que solicitan y exigen tener acceso. Porque pienso que la base es fundamental y uno parte de ahí para todo. Esto va muy enlazado con mucha unión con cultura y tecnología. La cultura es la unión y la tecnología la adoro. Nuestros saberes, nuestras formas de... Ajá, nuestra sabiduría propia, nuestros conocimientos. Our friend, the documentary director Amado Villafaña, gave a lecture on how to use his films in schools and showed us his newest documentary, Tejiendo Identidad. We train teachers and staff from the boarding school and other smaller remote schools in this WIWA region. We donated 28 laptops and upgraded some existing computers with open source software and educational materials and content. We also took the opportunity to engage in artistic creation. Working in collaboration with the administration, teachers and students, Sergio and Delfina, who are members of our Dynamizer team, created a mural using repurposed technology. The resulting mural portrays a female shaman known in the Wiwa culture as a saga. This is now a very beautiful piece in the school's central courtyard. Cuamo are the most westernized indigenous culture within the four brothers of the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta. Currently numbering about 12,200 people, the Cancuamo have endured numerous invasions in the past 500 years. Their culture continues to be under attack, their language is endangered, and their worship sites have been burned by arsonists. Despite these challenges, there are passionate leaders and community members who are working to recover their language and cultural heritage. La idea es de no alejarnos del mundo occidental, digamos de los saberes que no son propios, pero que pueden coadyuvar a que nosotros a través de esas herramientas tecnológicas podamos eh, fortalecer más nuestros procesos, en, sobre todo en esto de la lengua cancuama. The schools play a central role in these re-existence efforts. In September 2018, the Repurpose IT team visited Besguardo Cancuamo accompanied by officials from ONIC, the National Indigenous Organization of Colombia. We returned in December 2018 to implement the project. The Repurpose IT team trained 51 teachers from 12 schools across the Concuamo territory. 
we donated 32 laptops and upgraded 28 existing laptops with open source educational content. During this implementation, we led focused teacher workshops on art, language, and technology. During the Kung Kwamo teacher training, we introduced our Dynamizer approach. Dynamizers are specifically identified teachers that sustain the project after the implementation. They help their fellow teachers in using the tools and training Repurpose provides. Within their schools, they are a catalyst, communicator, and motivator. As Repurpose grows, they become part of a network of dynamizers in all schools empowered by Repurpose. For Repurpose IT's first partnership with the NASA culture, the team had the privilege of working in Resguardo Yaquiva in the mountains of South Central Colombia. The Yisefu schools are a national model for indigenous education. The high school has remarkable facilities, faculty, and a peck based curriculum. During the pre implementation visit in January 2018, Repurpose IT team members and members of ONIC educational team partner with the community to establish our core concepts. We met with the Resguardos governor, the indigenous authority, school leadership, principals and members of the community. We had enlightening discussions on the impact of technology on culture and the importance of indigenous education. In October 2018, we returned for our largest teacher training and laptop deployment to date. The Repurpose IT team of five trained teachers from all nine of the schools in the Resguardo. Thirty-two laptops were donated, and eleven existing computers were loaded with educational software and content. Teacher training was expanded to include a lesson planning framework from Stanford University DS School Design Theory. This supported the indigenous Minga concept, which means group work and collaboration. During the training, teachers worked in teams to build lesson plans based on eco-pedagogy and constructivism which are consistent with the NASA culture's own pedagogy and plan de vida. Okay. 
is undergoing a revitalization and re-existence. The sprawling metropolis of Bogota currently occupies what had been Huizca territory. Five communities, or resguardos, remain. Repurpose IT started a partnership with the Resguardo of Cota in December 2017. The city schools adhere to a Ministry of Education mandated curriculum. Therefore, the normal classroom-based implementation process was not an option. The team received guidance from the community spiritual leader, Abuelo Fernando Castillo. His homework assignments helped clarify the repurposed mission and approach to conserving indigenous culture with intention and mindfulness. In October 2019, the team adapted their teacher training and held a focused implementation at the Uba Mooks Preschool, Kindergarten, and Cultural Center, autonomously run by the Resguardo Cota. Uba Mooks is the Muisca word for greenhouse, symbolizing the importance of an eco-pedagogy-based education and learning from Mother Earth. Para ello nosotros vemos la educación como un pilar esencial para la vida y pervivencia de nuestro, de nuestro resguardo, de nuestra cultura, de nuestra tradición y son en este caso eh, las semillas, son los niños los que realmente nos permiten garantizar que esos procesos culturales de arraigo, de amor a la tierra, esos principios espirituales se mantengan. Entonces por eso justamente el nombre de Ubamox que significa casa o templo de la semilla. In addition to a carefully selected collection of cultural videos, the Muisca edition of the laptops contain an offline copy of the Muisca Kubun language dictionary. With guidance from Muisca authorities and community research, linguistic scholars have been able to reclaim 2,833 words of this previously extinct language. In March 2020, Repurpose IT visited with leaders from the Muisca Resguardo of Cota, the territory of Sesquile, and the governor of the Bosa community. The Sesquile territory is the location of the Laguna Guatavita, which is the origin of the legend of El Dorado. Following COVID-19, Repurpose IT will resume and grow its partnership with all five Muisca groups. Cota, Chia, Sesquile, Suba, and Bosa. Corpus IT's pilot project with ONIC took place at the Wounan Nonam schools in the villages of Puerto Pisario and Chachajo in Colombia's Pacific Coast rainforest. 
these close-knit communities and schools remain strong despite challenges of abject poverty and food insecurity. In this decade, they've been displaced from their ancestral homeland several times due to ongoing violence. We screened a trilogy of remarkable documentaries filmed a short distance from the Rio San Juan between 1964 and 1966. These films had a great reception in the community. They have been a catalyst for dialogue between the school children and the village elders, who were their ages when the films were made. In August 2017, the Repurpose IT team made the first visit to understand their current reality and to meet with the community for their approval and guidance. Repurpose IT returned twice that year for week-long teacher training sessions and to check on the donated laptops. The results of this pilot project greatly exceeded everyone's expectations. Although Repurpose IT has not been able to return since December 2017, we remain very actively engaged with the teachers and members of the community. Bueno, espero que hayan podido viajar un poquito de la misma manera que viajamos nosotros. I hope you were able to travel uh, to these wonderful places for um, half an hour. And I hope you enjoyed it the same um, or as much as we did. Now I'm going to tell you about the work that was done by the second team of Duke students, the team that work on creating lesson plans. Um, this team uh, is composed by uh, Nora, Catherine, Christian, and Carolina. You'll hear from them in a little bit. Our objective was to develop plans for classes in the topics of science, nutrition, and health. Um, the goal was to help teachers to make the most out of these laptops uh, donated by Repurpose IT and to introduce new content, particularly in the areas of nutrition and health. The principles guiding this work were um, education, technology, and culture, which are the pillars of Repurpose IT. We wanted to uh, facilitate the teaching of these very important topics, adding new content and pedagogical resources. Um, for technology, we wanted to make the best use possible from these wonderful computers that have so much and are, were, uh, are able to work without any connection to the internet. 
as the students will say, for example, we uh, can use a lot of the Wikipedia, the words perfectly offline. And for culture, uh, we wanted to take every topic of the best opportunity uh, to allow the kids to have a discussion and to identify, to recognize, to value, and to learn about their costumes, their culture, their language, their, and their identity. Christian? Hola, Christian. hi. <laughs> ah, uh, entonces, yo puedo empezar presentando. I can show what I um, are perfect. Hola, hi, hi everyone. Um, my name is Chris. Um, before I get into my eight weeks here, um, I wanted to first start off by thanking everyone on my, in, in, within my team. Um, it really made my quarantine experience a very meaningful and memorable one, and I wouldn't have wanted to do anything else during this time. Um, but pretty much like to show you like what I've been working on for these past eight weeks um, that has made this such a memorable experience um, is the fact that I've been working a lot on these lesson plans for a lot of the indigenous folks here. Um, and so entonces, what I like did for my eight weeks, it all start off with like basically me like learning the ways of like what makes a very effective lesson plan. And I, I had multiple conversations with Ted um, like basically going over the crux about like, okay, so asking great questions, being able to like inspire, being able to animate, being able to like have the students be engaged with a lot of the lesson plans. And so essentially what my role within like the project here was focusing a, hev a heavy amount on the education portion of things. Um, and pretty much like as soon as I got the ropes of that, like my next thing was to focus on like like getting in like the teacher's experience about like what like they think would be a good lesson plan like what they've done in the past and a lot of their projects that they've been working on as well um because like the fact that there's like the repurposed laptops um like added into the mix it opened like a whole new gate of opportunities for a lot of different various lesson plans and if you can look towards like the right section there's like my like unit unida um which i decided to focus on the science of water um and I specifically geared it to grade five because based off the model um, for the Bunkwimake, um, their lesson plans like was dedicated. Um, it, it was like a dedicated structure that was already in place. And I kind of like looked around through it to see like what I could find. And I did see that there was like a lot of emphasis within like water. And so I then took like what they had and then I kind of like manipulated it and like added my own things. So this is what I was working on for the past eight weeks. Um, and I made a couple of lesson plans to kind of show you an idea of like what, um, like what I wanted to talk about. Um, and so I wanted to talk about water and the cycle of water. And I will go over like an idea of like what, like I had for a lesson plan. Obviously I could go on hours and hours and hours talking about like every single like lesson plan. And I could go over like what, like I really wanted to show. Um, but obviously I only have a couple of minutes. So I'll go over like one of my example lesson plans that I had, um, which heavily uses a lot of the repurposed technology. Perfect. Um, but yeah, so here's more of like a glimpse into what mm. one of the modules sections would look like. So within the first six modules, the primer seis modulos, I have that we're going to go over the importance of a generalized like system of water, right? Like what makes water important? And if you can see under the recurso section, I have a ton of ways to be able to use the repurposed IT laptops. It almost became like a, it almost became like a door that opened up to another endless set of possibilities I could make um, for lesson plans. And, and without it, I like, obviously like I could have made more lesson plans, but I would have been an under a limited, a very much limited scope. Um, but pretty much the generalized outlook of like how we have like our um, like lesson plans is pretty much we have it broken down in periodos, which is essentially then broken down into like how many weeks um, that given topic is given and dedicated towards. And then the duración, which essentially dictates how many hours this entire, um, like, like this entire like um, lesson module would take. Um, and this would be made up of six modules, one hour dedicated to every single module. And here is an example module that I will show you if you could go to the next slide. Perfect. So to give a little bit of a details about what this um, module is focused on, um, 
the first module that I had dedicated towards was like just a generalized look into water and like the culture of water. I had a couple of pages listed and the students should have had like a chance to read them in class. Um, and now this is day two. This is what they would then go over, which is, ooh, which is then the states of water. Ooh, no, <laughs> go back. Perfect. Um, but the way that we had this structured for our lesson plans um, is actually a model that Ted helped inspire, um, which essentially has like a lot of the students being involved in correlating what they already know about a given topic and trying to allow the students to be able to collaborate and explore that topic even further. And so the first section, which is animar, um, pretty much this, how this section would look like is that you're essentially giving a good starter into what we're gonna be doing for today. Um, this could be in the format of like exit tickets, this, or entrance tickets. This could be in the format of like giving words for the students to define before they start a class. Um, or it could be a recap of what happened the day before. So for this one, um, I pretty much have that like the students will start off by like going outside and being able to connect a lot of the content about what water they can find within the natural environment um, and trying to be able to connect like, oh, well, I can find water here. I can find water in the rivers. I can find water in the body. I can find water in the trees and plants and et cetera, and animals. And basically dedicating that time for allowing the students to like realize what the topic connects to them. And then I have the Inspirar section, which pretty much like acts as a way to further expand their knowledge. Um, so pretty much what I have then is pretty much like having the students have a discussion. This can also be in the format of like allowing the teacher to be able to like say what they're, um, what they know about the topic. Um, so pretty much like how I have it is that like, this would be the chance for the teacher to be able to explain, oh, so this is what we're gonna be going over today. We're gonna to be going over what a solid is, what a liquid is, what a gas is, and we're gonna see like where you can find them out in the world. And pretty much this is where I lead into my project that I was working on for this specific lesson. If you go on to the next slide. Okay, entonces, la otra sección que tenemos para el plan de aula de la estructura es una sección de que enfoca en colaborar, explorar y crear. Collaborate, explore, and create. And pretty much, Ted me dio una idea uh, para buscar una diferente manera para usar el, el laptop. Y que a mí que, a mí que me encanta de los laptops de que, de que Ted ofreció, es de que busca para una manera creativa para formar diferentes formas de lesson plans. Entonces, yo, yo no he ido a pensar una idea así de que, de que oh, tenga una lista de palabras y deja que los estudiantes investigan qué son esas palabras. Entonces, que, que yo hice de eso es formar un proyecto de que yo lo llamo Actividad de, look, actividad de investigación de Wikipedia. Y prácticamente que yo tengo es de que los estudiantes se comparten diferentes grupos, tres específicamente para esta actividad. Un grupo va a agarrar sólido, solid, el otro va a agarrar líquido, liquid, y el otro va a agarrar gas, el gas. Y prácticamente uh, el maestro va a enseñar cómo para usar el Wikipedia, cómo para buscar cosas, y cada grupo lo va a dar una lista de palabras. Y con esas palabras, ellos van a investigar qué es, qué significa cada palabra. Entonces, por ejemplo, uh, así yo tengo un estudiante en el líquido sección, y a tener una palabra que decía river, el río. Entonces, ¿qué el estudiante después va a hacer? Es de que va a investigar qué es un río o qué es nieve, por ejemplo. Entonces, yo voy a tener un gran montón de este tipo de palabras y los estudiantes van a investigar qué es eso. Y dejarle que ellos juegan con los computadores y ganar exposure a eso a esos computadoras para que ellos pueden ten, para ellos pueden incorporar tecnología en su uh, plan diaria y después yo tengo con eso esos grupos de que los estudiantes después van a contestar algunas preguntas como ejemplo uh, qué es un y después vas a insertar el estado de materia entonces qué es un sólido qué es un líquido qué es un gas por qué hace esto por qué hace esto y el punto es de que yo quiero que los estudiantes Uh, se piensan en que algunas cosas son. Uh, Ted me ayudó en buscando un video de que, enfoco, de que enfoca en, en un maestro tratando de enseñar uh, en forma de haciendo más mejor preguntas. Preguntas de que deberían ayudar a pensar en vez de preguntas de que solo buscan para facts, factos. En vez de diciendo, oh, ¿qué es un río? Preguntas, ¿cómo puede hacer el río ayudar a esto? Por ejemplo. 
Y después yo tengo algunas preguntas que dicen, ¿qué hace este? ¿Por qué se hace esto un sólido? ¿Qué observas? Y después díganle que hagan dibujos en sus cuadernos o hagan dibujos en el Repurpose Laptop. Tratando de usar más los computadores lo más que posible que puedan. Uh, para entregar lo más que puedan. Y después, para el fin, en esta estructura que tenemos, tenemos reflejar y comparar. Y yo pienso que cada día, uh, cualquiera sea un proyecto, que sea un día de que lectura, que sea un día de que enfoca en, en cualquier le, eh, plan de aula, tenés que poner un resumen en qué pasó en ese día, para que lo pueda ayudar los estudiantes de que, de que entender y estar en el mismo paso. Entonces, por ejemplo, para eso, uh, cada grupo uh, ha trabajado en un sólido líquido o gas, y después, al fin, debería terminar con mencionando en algunas palabras de lista y tratando de, de explicar qué es esto cosas para que los estudiantes puedan entender. Uh, yo también tengo una otra parte de esto, reflejar y comparar, y es de que los estudiantes pueden enseñar qué es de que hicieron en el día. Entonces, para esto, uh, los estudiantes enfocaron en sólido, líquido y gas. Entonces, los estudiantes van a enseñar qué encontraron, como por ejemplo, oh, this is snow, esto es nieve, yo puedo usar esto para definir esto. Uh, o de que esto es un río, un río es líquido y uh, tiene esto cosas, etcétera, etcétera. Y prácticamente darle un chance para que los voces de los niños puedan comparar con otro voz de los niños también. Buscando para enseñar que los estudiantes pueden compartir su trabajo. Y mis últimos puntos que quiero dejar con. Uh, estas ocho semanas a mí me ha encantado un gran montón. It was a wonderful time. Amazing. Thank you, Ted. Um, pero la cosa es de que los laptops son exageradamente importantes. Con estos laptops, este plan de aulas iba a estar un poco más limitado. Es que para mí, yo, así ven esta sección aquí, cada módulo puede usar el, el repurpose laptop. Es que abre un, un nuevo uh, gate, un nuevo oportunidad para que los estudiantes puedan aprender una diferente forma. Si no tenían el repurpose laptop, después ellos tienen que poner un gran énfasis en diferentes formas de aprendizaje. Uh, pero prácticamente, laptops, importante. Y después, así yo tuve un otro par de ocho semanas, yo he ido a dedicar uh, haciendo más diferentes tipos de planes de aula. Si se fijaron en el principio de mi presentación, yo enfoqué en el agua y en general, por qué el agua es tan importante, el ciclo de agua, y después he ido a enfocar en un otro plan de aula enfocado en, en la ecología de agua y tratando de conectar muchos diferentes puntos en un, un solo. También otra cosa que yo he ido a estar trabajando en este par de ocho semanas es buscando cómo para poner más cultura en mis planes de aulas. Es que seguramente el agua es bien importante para la cultura y es un gran montón de información de que yo todavía tengo que aprender. Pero si yo tuve esa información right after that, yo seguramente lo he ido a poner. Pero yo sé que esto es un componente que yo todavía tengo que investigar un poco más. Y también yo tengo algunas otras ideas de que yo simplemente tengo que formar. Uh, como por ejemplo, yo tenía una idea de usar los repurposed laptops para tener Jeopardy Games. Uh, es un tipo de juego de que, de que compartís con algunos estudiantes y contesta algunas preguntas. Y cualquier pregunta que contestan correcto, gana una cierta cantidad de puntos. Y eso no requisita el internet y solo puede usar el, el computadora y, y así lo da más ideas para usar los computadoras para enseñar los planes de aula. Pero eso es el punto que voy a dejar con. Ahora voy a darle a, Carol, a Carolina. Cristian, muchas gracias. Eh, primero que todo, quería decir que esta ha sido una experiencia maravillosa trabajando con un equipo también maravilloso. Eh, me llamo Carolina. Um, I first wanted to say that this has been such an eye-opening and wonderful experience of learning with such an incredible team. And my lesson plan is on nutrition and math. So I decided to take an interdisciplinary approach to creating the lesson plans because I believe that this truly allows to reinforce topics that the students have already learned um, with math while introducing a new interesting topic such as nutrition in a more practical way. Um, decidí tomar un 
una vía interdisciplinaria para crear estos planes porque me parece que es una buena forma de reforzar los eh, temas de matemáticas que los estudiantes ya han aprendido, eh, incluyéndolo en los temas de nutrición que van a atender en una forma más interactiva y práctica. Eh, este plan es una unidad y la unidad tiene cinco módulos. Es una introducción a los diversos tipos de alimentos, eh, el sistema métrico, cómo se miden los alimentos, los fraccionarios y porcentajes, una dieta balanceada, las gráficas, la nutrición y la salud y una reflexión final que tiene que ver con un diario de alimentos. Y la unidad como tal eh, tiene 10 horas con cada módulo teniendo 5 horas. So this is a unit lesson plan that has five modules and it is hopefully taking up two hours for each module with a total of 10 hours. And the way that the lesson plan is structured is supposed to be a review of math that the students have already seen all of these topics since third grade, fourth grade, and now fifth grade while introducing the new topics of nutrition. If you can go on to the next slide, please. Thank you. And so as I mentioned, the first module is an introduction to nutrition and the different types of food groups. So we give them a summary of the seven types of foods and the nutritional values of each one. In addition to introducing new key vocabulary related to nutrition, such as macromolecules, vitamins, minerals, and explaining what each of them are. In addition, we encourage the students to apply this new information about nutrition and diet that they learn in the context of their own diets. So for example, here in the activity of CREAR, we ask the students to create their own Rueda de Alimentos, which is a key graphic of this module, using the foods that they already eat and like in order for them to be able to identify the nutritional value that they already have and the nutri nutrients that they already consume and be able to identify areas of improvement and where they can improve their diet. Perfect. And one of the key goals of this lesson plan is to allow students to understand that math is really useful which can be something kind of hard for children of, you know, third, fourth, and fifth grade to understand. But we really want them to feel as though math is a tool that they definitely will use in their everyday life. And the way that this lesson plan does that is by incorporating these concepts of math in a new way that the students necessarily may have not considered before. So for example, with fractions and percentages, the students use fractions and percentages to be able to balance a plate, assigning different fractions and percentages to different food groups. In addition, with graphs and statistics, students are asked to analyze different information about nutrition and health in a more visual and interactive way. And um, my personal favorite is the system of measurements. So students learn how to measure food using different units and different systems of measurements. And we also introduce a new tool, which is using their hand to be able to measure the amount of food they eat. That way they always have the tools to be able to balance their own diet. Um, y en español, eh, la idea de, de este plan es enseñarle a los estudiantes que la matemática es muy divertida. Entonces queremos, y que también es muy práctica y útil, entonces queremos introducir diferentes métodos eh, matemáticos, por ejemplo, las fracciones, los porcentajes y las gráficas, incorporando el tema de nutrición y mostrar a los estudiantes que ellos pueden usar las matemáticas todos los días cuando tiene que ver con la nutrición. Y al final, eh, so at the end, there is a final reflection, which is the last module. And so throughout the entire unit, we ask the students to keep a food diary, writing down what they ate, how they felt, and um, what they did that day. And hopefully at the end of the unit, the students can sit down and look, okay, so when I ate this, I felt great. And when I ate this, I didn't feel that great or didn't have that much energy. And using the information that we provided in the other modules about nutrition and health, we asked the students to 
see a relationship between the foods they ate and how they're feeling and how their health is, and hopefully being able to identify the nutrients that they get from these foods. And hopefully they can also identify what nutrients they are getting, what part of their diets are awesome, and also areas for improvement and different ways in which they can improve. And the final part of the reflection is hopefully to have a discussion with different students in their classrooms, professors, and hopefully different leaders of the community in order to identify ways in which the students themselves can improve their own diet, but also um, how the community as a whole can improve not only their diet, but food security. And this ideally would be using the areas of improvement that the students themselves identified in the earlier reflection component. So this not only includes the factual information that they learned about nutrition, but also the cultural information that the leaders and the professors can provide from the community. Um, yes, that is my lesson plan. <laughs> and I will pass it on to Muda. Thank you, Carolina. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Nura. Um, this summer, I focused my efforts on creating a mental health curriculum. Buenos dias a todos. Me llamo Nura. Este verano, centré mis esfuerzos en crear un plan de estudios de salud mental. So why did I decide to focus on mental health? So recently in the Western world, the focus on mental health in terms of wellness has become much more prevalent. Um, our, our mental health is impacted in every activity that we do, whether it be a positive or negative impact. Um, recentemente, en el mundo occidental, el foque en la salud mental en términos de bienestar se ha vuelto mucho más frecuente. Nuestra salud mental se ve afectada en cada actividad que hacemos, ya sea un impacto positivo o negativo. Um, entonces, as you can see from the chart, the mind, the body, the spirit create a balance that allows us to flourish as individuals. Um, para atender uh, um, adecuadamente estas cosas, uh, debemos educarnos sobre la importancia de cuidar estos tres elementos dentro de cada uno de nosotros. Um, we find that a lack of attention to ourselves can factor into heightened anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, learning disabilities, and sleep deprivation, to name a few. So many of those things have their onset in childhood, um, but can be managed in a healthy manner if caught early on. So this is why it's very important um, for students um, to learn about mental health. You can go to the next slide. So the importance of cultural competency and interculturality. So cultural competency was a crucial factor in making these lesson plans because it was important for me to understand the beliefs, the values, and the feelings of a variety of indigenous communities to create plans that would not only benefit them, but that could also be accompanied with established cultural beliefs. So before I learned anything about the cultures, I had made assumptions that mental health conversation was limited because it is quite limited in the United States. But as I learned more, I found that that was actually the opposite. Um, balance, harmony, and the spirit are very intertwined with daily practices of many indigenous cultures. So I had to rework my lesson plans with keeping this in mind. Um, it became also apparent to me that mental health is not a concept that stands alone for many indigenous cultures, but it is a larger part of the alignment of balance with Mother Earth, um, other people, and oneself. Um, entonces, salud mental es un, un pequeño um, component de, de las gran cultura de indigenous comunidades, y es muy importante incluir um, los conceptos de tierra materna y um, equilibria y mente y cuerpo y espíritu. So um, in doing so, it wasn't only important to understand the differences between Western and indigenous culture, but it was very crucial to understand the differences between the indigenous cultures, such as the Arwako, the Wiwa, and the Wanong cultures to make sure that the lesson plans were conducive um, to everyone and not generalized. Um, so when making the plans again, I, I had to constantly keep in mind um, how to be culturally competent and 
implement things that would allow for interculturality to flourish, um, but without it coming to the expense of the traditions and the cultures of the indigenous people. Um, so here are, here's the um, table of contents for the entire structure of um, the lesson plans I created. Um, so as you can see, topics that were covered included um, being aware of your emotions um, and actions in addition to being aware of the emotions of others. So um, the plans incorporated um, things such as like art activities because art is a very fundamental component in many indigenous cultures. Um, arte es muy importante para, para los indígenas. Um, entonces yo he incorporado muchas artes components en los lesiones. Um, in addition, um, the plans follow a similar format of the plans that were given to us by our Wakulin Wanan teachers as um, Christian and Carolina kind of explained previously. Um, furthermore, um, the lesson plans have a focus kind of on the individual and that goes into how that can benefit the community. Um, and this is because in the indigenous, in many indigenous cultures, there is a heavy focus on the community and the importance of the group. So to create a hybrid um, with interculturality, um, there's a focus in the lesson plans on how, the, how taking care of yourself can benefit your community as a whole. Um, you can go to the next slide. So um, these are a few examples um, from the lesson plans that I took out to share with you all. Um, entonces, um, estos son un, un poco ejemplos um, de los lesiones. So for example, um, in each unit at the end, there was a final project. So one of the final projects included research and creativity. So on the um, left, you can see that the um, Criterios de Evaluación is a project for a mental health and food um, unit. So students are challenged to investigate the food that they eat in the community by interviewing various community members on the food and they're challenged to create um, a summary basically of, of how they think the nutritional foods that they eat benefit their mental health. And then they are challenged to create and serve a dish that um, they create and they're challenged to create a dish that um, positively benefits their mental health. Um, entonces, en este proyecto, estudiantes son, son um, pregunta crear un, un uh, comida, ese um, beneficiar un salud mental um, de las comunidades. And then for the homework assignment from um, one of the lesson plans, it's focused on art. So students are asked to create something like an arts and crafts, so a drawing or a basket. Um, and while creating it, they're asked to think about their emotions and how um, working through this project makes them feel. And so that um, serves the purpose of being emotionally aware. Um, entonces para, para un tarea, por, es, por ejemplo, estudiantes, um, Pueden crear un proyecto de arte y estudiantes puede, pueden um, creer son emocionantes. And then for the in-class activity, one of the examples is a motion bingo. So students are given an, um, a bingo board and each number on their board corresponds with an emotion. So a teacher can, um, for example, call out a number and students are challenged to um, explain a time when they felt the emotion that corresponds with the number and then whoever has the um, has their entire board filled by the end wins the game essentially. Um, entonces eh, there is a emocionante bingo eh, y estudiantes tiene un número y emocionante y estudiantes describir um, ellos emocionantes para, para el juego. Um, so those are like just some examples from the lesson plans. Um, but I did, I did just want to say that I really enjoyed um, this process and learning a lot about many indigenous cultures in Colombia. And I loved working with my team and, and Dahlia and Ted and Ingrid and, and Blanca Nelsi and just everyone. I'm so thankful for this experience and for um, especially the indigenous people we worked with. They really opened their hearts to us um, and taught us a lot about their culture. So I very much appreciated that. And with that, I will pass it off to Catherine.
forgot to mute, unmute myself. Um, hi everyone, my name is Catherine. Uh, this summer I developed my lesson plans around the topic of digestion as well as a more focused topic on diabetes and how um, digestion and food consumption is tied in with diabetes. Um, I'm extremely grateful to have worked really closely alongside this nutrition and education team to create these technological inter interdisciplinary and cultural sensitive lesson plans. Another aspect of the lesson plans that um, everyone has touched upon that we thought was essential to incorporate were interactive activities and discussions that facilitated student participation. So out of the six boxes of our lesson plans, three of them, Collaborare, Explorare, and Creare, allowed emphasis for hands-on activities and group or class discussions. And my intention for my topic was to create new class activities and resources to encourage learning science that students can't necessarily see in front of them. For example, regarding the digestive system, students can't necessarily view the human internal body or visualize important diabetic concepts or molecules like insulin. But I hoped with hands-on activities, students could better grasp these biological concepts of digestion and diabetes to influence their knowledge on food consumption as well as, as, well as its relation with diabetes. So I split my lesson plan um, into three major groups, the first being an introduction to digestion. Um, I put an example here of the Collaborar section where students work together to complete the following worksheets. These are just warm up worksheets that allow students to try and teach themselves as well as to learn from their own peers. And students can interact with the vocabulary words on their own to fill in the blanks of the paragraph and of the picture of the general digestive system. Um, the second unit of my yes lesson plan was about digestion and food consumption. Um, this unit is intended to act as a bridge from digestion in, into diabetes and how food can influence the body and its health. Um, I put an example here from the Explorer section where students complete group tasks to identify macronutrient groups such as carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, which are relevant to their own community foods and the second group task would be to build a balanced diet using these same foods and to keep that in mind for the third unit. Um, the third unit of my lesson plan is about diabetes and it ties in what students have learned from the first two units on digestion and food consumption and this unit focuses on what diabetes is and how to prevent or treat it. Um, I put an example of the career section where students show what they've taken from the three units to work together and to form a final presentation. This allows students to collaborate and individuals to share what they've learned with each other. Um, and mainly from all three units, I tried to tie in group participation so students can learn from each other since these are biological concepts and they can't necessarily see it in front of them and to keep as interactive as possible to facilitate more class discussion and the, the relationship between students themselves. Um, and once again, like the others, I'm super grateful to have spent my summer with this amazing Duke Engage team and I'm really grateful for the past eight weeks. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Catherine. Eh, gracias, Nora, Cristian y Carolina. El, el equipo de educación le quiere dar un agradecimiento muy, muy especial de corazón a los profesores eh, que se reunieron con nosotros. Thank you, teachers that uh, met with us and gave us so generously your time to help us develop these lessons. Um, Jairo Enrique Asprilla Romaña, Roberto López Chanchao, José Crespo González, Jessy Torres Villafaña. Y también muchas gracias a Andrea Escobar, a Ingrid Diani, a Blanca Nelsi Cifuentes y a Iván Sears por toda su ayuda con estos eh, planes de clase. Eh, Miguel les va a mostrar eh, a todo el equipo y luego le vamos a dar unos minuticos a Ted para que diga las palabras finales. Muchas gracias a todos por escucharnos. Simplemente queríamos reconocer a todos los participantes de Duke Engage eh, Colombia 2020. Leo Akers, Christian Benitez, Claire Kramer, Nora Coney Laera, Jackson Moraica, Carolina Sierra Correa, Catherine Yao, 
uh, and our collaborator, Rafael Osuba, and of course, uh, Ted Hine, who is the director of Duke Engage. And just uh, some of you couldn't see them, uh, then I just want to show their photos. Uh, here we have all of them Nura, Kathy, Carolina, and Christian, uh, Rafael, Leo. Uh, Claire and Jackson and myself also. Okay, and Ted. Thank you. That was all that I want to share with you. Excuse me, Ted. Okay. <laughs> bueno, uh, I just want to say uh, that I have had the the honor to see um, how repurpose has evolved over time, and I have to share with you that I'm amazed, happy, and proud of uh, the path the organization has uh, walked and seen it grow uh, from its beginning and uh, realize that this growth has been achieved to this articulation and collaboration that will strengthen the cultures and uh, voices of uh, the native people in Colombia. And in today's context, uh, especially with uh, the pandemic, I, I think it's even more relevant um, to empower these communities in the use of these technological tools. Um, and uh, I do believe that these communities have a strong message and wisdom to share with, with us, his, uh, as they say, their smaller brothers and sisters. And um, this project is helping and aiding towards uh, that aim, that uh, objective. So I just want to say and uh, congratulate you all for this amazing work. Um, I'm really happy to be involved with this and to collaborate in any way I can. So congratulations to everyone. Ted, wow. Wow, I, I, I'm amazed. Thank you. Uh, and next, uh, Ingrid. Hola a todos. Eh, primero que todo, quisiera agradecer a los padres espirituales que nos han permitido tejer en este proceso, eh, primero con las autoridades y docentes indígenas y ahora pues con ustedes, los profesores, la institución y sobre todo los alumnos del DUC. Eh, quería agradecerlo porque ustedes llegan a este tejido, a este proceso, como una parte más de esta mochila con un color bonito que llega a darnos fortaleza, lo agradezco, agradezco sobre todo a los chicos y a los profesores del Duke por su tiempo, dedicación y um, por ese amor y el corazón que le han puesto al trabajo. Eh, se vio en cada uno de los productos presentados. Eh, espero que esto, pues, esta unión, esta alianza, este tejido se pueda seguir haciendo, se mantenga a través del tiempo, poderlo recibir en territorio indígena y compartir De, de, de más cerca, ¿no? Muchas gracias por todo ese trabajo, muchas gracias por el esfuerzo y agradezco también por el proceso espiritual que como Repurpose hicimos porque eso nos abrió camino y el, la respuesta es que ustedes hoy están pues aquí fortaleciendo nuestro proceso, caminando y, y haciendo colectivamente. Muchas gracias. It's a Kenny. Thank you, Ingrid. Y ahora Blanca Nelsi. Listo. ¿Sí me ven o no? Te vemos perfecto. Bueno, buenos días. Eh, bueno, yo estoy muy, muy eh, feliz, eh, agradecida con todos ustedes, especialmente con Miguel y con Dalia por eh, dirigir este hermoso eh, equipo, tanto en la parte de educación y comunicaciones y nutrición y seguridad alimentaria eh, eh, con unos excelentes resultados. Eh, estoy también muy agradecida con Repurpose por darme la oportunidad de poner un granito de arena. Eh, pues eh, yo soy ingeniera química y hemos tra he estado trabajando pues también implementando laboratorios virtuales Eh, de la Universidad de Colorado en los computadores que es, es fundamental para que nuestras comunidades indígenas 
puedan mejorar su nivel de educación y sobre todo en esta época que no tienen acceso fácil y no tienen laboratorios. Entonces, eh, pues, eh, estoy muy agradecida con todos ustedes, con el equipo de jóvenes, eh, excelente trabajo eh, y con Ted, pues, por toda su dedicación para, para poder llegar a, a muchos eh, lugares, a muchos sitios apartados con todas estas eh, herramientas tecnológicas que, que, que pueden mejorar la educación de de nuestros eh, indígenas en Colombia y bueno, en muchas partes, porque él ha ido a muchas partes. Entonces, muchas gracias eh, por ese excelente trabajo a todos ustedes a, y a todos los colaboradores, a todas las personas que hicieron posible que esto eh, ahora eh, pues haya un producto final con una excelente página web. Entonces, excelente. Muchas gracias. Ed, uh, antes, de, antes de decir mi parte, me gustaría uh, 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 compartir un video con usted, un video, un uh, audio con ustedes de Alex. Um, uh, es, es corto, so, uh, es importante para el, para el grupo de Repurpose um, escuchar la voz de Alex uh, como parte del equipo. So, si me permiten, voy a poner su video, espero que lo escuchen. I mean, su audio, espero que lo escuchen. Hola, ¿qué tal? Muy buenos días. Desde Resguardo Indígena Chachajo, Río Bajo San Juan, Institución Educativa Nonan, sede Centro San Juan Bautista, con mucho cariño le saluda Alexander Garabato, soy indígena de etnia de Verana, Cía Pidana. Principalmente agradecimiento a Iguandam por darme esta oportunidad de expresarme ante ustedes. Agradecimientos a los profesores de Duke Kane, en especial al profesor Miguel y Dalia. También a cada uno de los estudiantes. Me siento muy feliz que este proyecto haya terminado el inicio de una nueva luz. Que estoy seguro que esto seguirá creciendo. También quiero compartir un poco sobre mi experiencia con Reportus Haití. He aprendido en cada uno de los pueblos donde Reportus ha visitado, en el caso del pueblo Nasa, el pueblo Muisca, Tancuamo, Huigua, el pueblo Aruaco y el pueblo Huaunan. Son experiencias muy bonitas que a uno como persona lo pone a reflexionar y que todos los pueblos indígenas Valoremos la madre tierra y su cultura y conocimiento ancestrales. Esa es una conexión que hay en los diferentes pueblos indígenas, no importa el lugar donde estemos ubicados. También con mis estudiantes hemos trabajado usando los computadores de reportos los estudiantes lo utilizan para realizar sus investigaciones, para hacer sus trabajos y lo más importante, que ellos puedan escribir en lengua propia sus historias. Y uno de mis sueños es seguir trabajando en crear contenido y programa propio. Finalmente, me quiero despedir agradeciendo a mis amigos y padre, Tech también a mis queridos compañeros, y compañera, Yalima, Yael, Blanca Nelsi, María, Ingrid, Iván, Sergio y Cristian. Gracias a todos. Que Guantán nos siga iluminando nuestro camino. Pía, Uajim, Duni, gracias. Perdón, disculpa. Um. There we go. I'm coming into the screen, hopefully. Um, thank you for allowing me to play that, that uh, audio, guys. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure Alex will appreciate that, too. It was really meaningful. Uh, when I listened to the audio, um, it was really touching to me. And, and this is this is kind of what uh, why we do what we do. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna improvise a little bit. I'm gonna ask um, Dalia, uh, Miguel, and all the students to please turn out on your video. Um, we're gonna I'm gonna improvise a little bit. Excellent, Ted. Thank you. Okay, and I'm missing who. Okay, I think I think we're good. Okay, so audience, the people that you're seeing right in front of you were challenged with something that uh, didn't make sense the first two weeks or, the, or even the first week, uh, but then they got into it. They really um, got in into the problem, found it, found the solution, and hopefully they're, they're, they'd learn something. So what I wanted to say to, to, to all of you is, um, for Duke Engage, please continue to support and promote this kind of uh, programs. It makes a difference. It makes a difference to a lot of people. Um, I know a lot of us feel a lot of, pa a lot of passion for, for what we do. Um, so please keep, keep promoting this, keep um, uh, engaging into this um, type of programs. Dalia, Miguel, what can I say? Uh, it has been wonderful. Um, thank you very much for, for everything, time, support, and, and your dedication. Um, students, what can I tell you? Um, eternally grateful. Um, I wish I can have you for a year, but that's not the case. So I, I, I will settle for eight weeks. Great job, fantastic. So please um, be proud. Be proud for what you've done. Eight weeks is a very short time, and you did, you did fantastic. He shows. So thank you. Ted, I'll leave it to you now. All right, a couple of things. Um, I'll try to keep this short. I meant to start the timer on my phone, but I'll, I'll keep it short. Um, you'll each get specific words of thanks, um, but I want to do that properly with either a call or an email. Um, but let's, let's look at, I want to start just with some facts. You know, this is about hearts and minds, and you gave both of those to the project in a way that really surpassed my expectations. Um, and it'll be very meaningful to really take the organization to the next level. This is a crucial day, a transition. Um, if we start talking about, so Alex, um, as you know, he's on, and this is not just for the students, but for everybody else in the audience, um, he's on the other side of the digital divide. That's why um, he couldn't be with us. He tried and tried, as you've known in trying to contact him um, he's in a remote uh, area, of course, and if we look at, there's 1.9 million indigenous in Colombia, and the statistic um, from the census of Colombia in 2018 is overall as a country, they've got 54.1% of the total population of Colombia that have internet access. For indigenous in remote villages, it's 1.2%. 1.2% of them have that technology. So that's one aspect of the technology piece that we try to do. The other aspect, of course, is the ancestral technology. You've done wonders in understanding that and incorporating that. It's not about us pushing, oh, here's internet, here's these contents that are on the laptop. That's a technology piece. And then the education piece, uh, education team, you did such an honor to incorporating the cultural aspects and the pedagogies and um, learning what you didn't know or taking, again, hearts and minds together to teach some um, really interesting things. I know I've learned things in the process and I know a number of you have said you've learned them as well. Um, but when we look at the statistics, so that's the heart side of the education. Um, when we look at the statistics of education in Colombia, um, again, the Ministry of Education does wonders. They've got enormous challenges for a, a country that's in transition. But we look at the statistical results of those 1.9 million indigenous people. Again, 1.9 million. The percentage of that 1.9 million that have graduated from university is 0.9%. That's, um, that's a number. 7.6% uh, have attended some part of university. Uh, Alex is one of those. He's working to uh, complete his degree um, weekends, uh, traveling 
um, more time to get to the university than he spends in the university. Um, and then if we actually look at postgraduate um, for the, the, the census, number of indigenous that have a postgraduate degree, according to the census, 0.0%. .0%. One percent have started some kind of a postgraduate education. If we look at the percentage of adults, of adults, and there's a thing here that shows preschool, primary, secondary, um, community college, university, postgraduate, and that has one that says none, with no education whatsoever in an Occidental or Western perspective. Twenty percent of adults have had no formal education from our Western perspective. Do we pity that? Is that a horrible number? Yes, it is. But at the same time, they've got knowledge that none of us have. And when we work with them, there's uh, some pretty amazing uh, lessons to be learned from them. So that's the education piece. You can't measure culture. You can't. The census has things about language. And by the way, this is up on the website, has things about language. Language is an aspect or a measurement for culture, but it's not culture in itself. itself. Um, Miguel, Jack, Leo, Claire, on the communication side. Um, it's beautiful. I encourage everybody um, to go and look at not just the great videos that we saw, and you'll see them in high resolution if you go to the website, but beneath those, you'll hear stories from the teachers and their words, uh, what they feel about technology, their own technology, their pride in their culture, and um, I really encourage people to do that. There's some great stories there. Um, and also, if you look at it, we really got a great tour from the, the northeastern part of Colombia in the Sierra Nevada mountains through the, the top stripe of those three cultures, the, the three of the four brothers in the Sierra Nevada, heart of the world, uh, down through um, uh, Cundamarca near Bogota, Ingrid's community, uh, Muisca community. Um, saludos a todo aquí. Uh, Mis amigos en Cota. And, and then from there, we get down to Terra Dentro um, in South Central and then out to the ocean. And you'll notice also the three bottom cultures are all related to water. We heard how there's water lesson plans. So you couldn't have designed and thought that up ahead of time on how that all really nicely ties in with culture and with the communities. So that's perfect. Um, I do want to tell everybody because the website's all fantastic, but very early this morning, um, there's one important point, and I'm going to have, yeah, so we can see there, there's the, uh, the three pueblos on the top there. Uh, uh, those are three of the four most traditional, or at least two of them, the, the Arawako and the Wiwa, are some of recognized as some of the most traditional uh, in Latin America. Um, and then down, uh, certainly incredible ancestral knowledge and wonderful stories from the three uh, pueblos that we have down there below. Um, and then uh, that's fantastic. One aspect of the website that I'd like to help uh, to have people that are listening to this help try out, um, and that would be if you could click on the donate us, the donate or get involved, and click on donate there. Wait a second. And then under individual donations, certainly if anybody has corporate donations, we're not quite ready for that, but please contact us. We're interested, but let's go into the individual donation page. And you'll see this button all over there. You can read, read there, click on the donate. Um, it is live and it's working. And um, if you can help us, uh, that would be incredibly appreciated because we're really getting started. And uh, this website is an incredible treasure that helps us uh, do that. So yeah, just scroll down and you'll see there. And most importantly, we're looking for sustainers. This isn't about, um, a one-time amount. Certainly, we're appreciative for that. Uh, but if you choose to check the box for make this donation monthly and uh, give whatever you see uh, that you can find your way to doing so, um, if you think you've got uh, particularly moved by this and you've got a larger donation that you'd like to make, um, we can save uh, us all and be more effective if you go offline donation and we'll handle that directly. Um, so that was my, my one commercial plug there. Uh, again, thank you so much, everybody. And uh, if you know, we've gone well more than the time we thought we were going to take. So, if uh, people do have some questions, um, we can stay along for a little question and answer. 
Um, were there any other, uh, Dahlia, did you want to have some closing comments or? No, I just wanted to say thank you so much for everyone 